everyone, this is Ellie May with Artist Pre, and today I have a fun project. I am going to be using the Artist Pre sublimation paints, but you could also do this with the sublimation markers or even the ink pads if you would like to. So the, I'm going to be using a blank today that is the Pet Bandana, and I'm going to be making some Halloween costumes. I'm going to be doing this freehand just to show you how you can do it. I am by no means an artist, as you will see, but we're going to give this a go. So let's go over the supplies first. You're going to need a basic pair of scissors, a pencil. You want to make sure to use pencil when you're working with the sublimation products from Artist Pre. Pencil does not transfer from the copy paper or the mixed media paper that you would be using if... Um, I'm going to be using the paints, so I'm going to be using the mixed media paper because it's just a little bit thicker and the paints can be a little bit more um, liquidy. So we're going to need paint brushes as well. I'm just going to be using some generic paper plates for my paint palettes, but you could use a paint palette. And then I have these pet bandanas, the Artist Pre pet bandanas. I have my Artist Pre heat tape and very important, the Artist Pre protective paper. You want to make sure to use this to protect your surface on your heat press. I'm also going to be using the Artist Pre protective pad. When I pull it off, this is a heat safe pad and I use it all the time. And the Artist Pre color mixing chart, there's a link in the description below to all these supplies and this color mixing chart. I'm going to show you two projects and the second one I'm going to be mixing some paint. So let's go ahead and let's get started. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my black sublimation paint and I'm going to give it a shake. And then while I'm shaking that, I, in most cases, you can just use normal plain copy paper when you are using the Artist Pre sublimation products. Since I'm going to be using the paints, I did grab some mixed media paint um, or mixed media paper. This is just gonna be a little bit thicker for using with the paint. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to draw out um, a template so I know how big my design is. So I'm simply going to open this package and take the tags off here. And then here is my, I'll shake that off, here is the pet bandana. Now what you'll notice is that it does not fit fully on my piece of paper. Now I can get it as much as possible, but I'm really not going to worry about it because these edges here are going to be what are behind the uh, pet when it's on, in the case of what I'm working on. You could always try larger paper if you chose to do so. So I'm simply going to draw out kind of my template and you can color outside the lines with these products. And in most cases, with most of the blanks, you do want to color outside of the lines so that you don't end up with any white spots where you don't want those white spots. So then I am just going to freehand draw. By no means, I am not an artist but I have a couple ideas in my head, so I want to um, draw those out. So I'm going to quickly draw this out and I'm gonna speed up the video and then I'll come back when I get ready to paint. Okay, now I'm going to, I have my sketch out here. Um, actually, it looks like I want to uh, bring this out just a little bit more. That's the great part about pencil too, is that you can then kind of adjust it. Again, I'm not an artist, but I wanna show you how simple this can be. So here we go. So we're gonna see how well this works. I grabbed some copy paper. I'm just gonna put this underneath. I do have a silicone mat underneath to protect my work surface, but I'm going to put some copy paper there as well. And then I'm going to clean this off. Now, my idea is 
I want to see if I can get my cat to wear this. It's a pet bandana. It'll fit all kinds of animals, but I have cats. So we are going to see what kind of photo shoot I can get out of these um, pet bandana costumes. So I am going to first take some of this black paint and I'll probably need a bit more. Keep in mind that the colors that you see with sublimation um, inks and paints and uh, products that they don't actually, it's not the final um, it, color that you're going to see until it is heat pressed, which I have my heat press heating up at 400 degrees and I'm going to press this once it's completely dry. So you don't want to get it too thick. I'm going to press it for 60 seconds. And then we'll see how these turn out. So a very quick, fun costume for an animal. Pet that you have. A stuffy. You could also do this for your kids' stuffies. Um, they could even design the costume that they would like. That would be an option too. So I'm just going to speed this video up while I finish painting the rest of this. Okay, now I had something happen, so I got a little bit messy, which is normal for me. I have a little spot right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a piece of this heat tape, and I'm going to cut a tiny, tiny little piece off. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to add this on top of that area. And when it goes to heat press, that area, that paint won't press onto my object. So it's a little trick. If you do have any areas that mess up, you can cover that with a piece of the heat tape and it'll help keep it safe. So I'm just going to finish this up here. And then the next step, and sometimes you just got to let it go and not try to make it all super smooth in a straight line. So let's do a little bit more over here. And then we need to let this dry completely. And while that's drying, I am going to sketch out a second one because I actually have two cats. So I want to see if I can get this photo shot, photo um, thing done with two of these cats. So I'm going to speed up this video while I do the second one, but it's going to be the same thing, except I'm going to be mixing paints according to this paint chart. So we'll take a quick look at how I am doing that. And then once those are dry, we'll come back and we'll get to pressing our pet bandanas. Now I had just taken some ideas I had seen from Pinterest for different costumes and kind of drew out those, sketched out those what I wanted to do. You don't have to freehand it. You could use a machine to help you draw. You could use a stencil all kinds of ideas with this, but I just wanted to show how quickly, even though I'm not a full-blown artist, how I could just do that. And, you know, it was for my cats, so um, it turned out just fine. And then I used the Artist Pre color mixing chart and I mixed paints. Now what I would say here is make sure that you mix enough paint for the entire project so you don't have to try to mix and match the same shade a second time um, and then make sure that you mix all of the paint together before you get started because if you don't and you have some excess in your paintbrush like say of yellow then your yellow is going to show up on your different paint but i do like the way that the paints show different variants in color as you'll see at the very end here and then I'm going very quickly in the video. Um, I really did not do that. Uh, so just take your time. Make sure you don't get paint where you don't want the paint, different colors. 
Okay, now once they are dry, I have both of my designs here, I can go ahead and get rid of any of my scrap paper. I did use this color mix chart, as you saw, for the pumpkin, and we're going to see how that's going to turn out. So the next step that I'm going to do is I'm going to take my pet bandana and I'm going to place it down on here. And this is one reason you wanted to color outside the lines is then I'm going to line this up as best as I can. And you can see that my color extends past. So that helps it so that there won't be any white spots past that. Again, I'm not worried about the edges here because they're actually going to be tied in a knot for the pet bandana. So now I'm going to take some heat tape and I just have this on a tape dispenser to make it easier. And I'm going to secure this very, very well. Since it is paint on this paper and it when it dried, it kind of curled it up. I'm going to make sure that this is very well secure. So let me speed up the video while I get this all taped in place. Then I'm going to set this one aside and let's pull in my pumpkin and I'm going to grab my bandana. and Open it up. And then I'm using the same size. So make sure if you do have different sizes that you have used that as your template. And then I'm going to line that up and tape that in place as well. Okay, now once I have both of these, I have my heat press over here. It is set for 400 degrees and I'm going to press it for 60 seconds. The most important part of this process and the noisiest is going to be my protective paper. And I want to make sure that I am covering all of it and I have an excess border around it because I do not want the ink to get onto my press. So I'm gonna cut off four sheets of this I'll speed it up and take the sound out so it's not so noisy. Now, I am using the 60-foot roll of Artist Pre-Protective Paper that they just came out with. It's awesome, great for projects like this so that you can utilize it for longer. So then I'm just going to take this, I'm going to cover my heat press, the bottom of my heat press, and then you are making a sublimation sandwich. So you're putting your protective paper down, then you are going to flip your blank over. So you're going to flip it and your sublimation print is on the top. And I'm going to set that on the press. And then I'm gonna take another sheet and this is going to complete our sandwich. And then I am going to close the press and we're going to count down for 60 seconds. Now I'm just checking that just a little bit. I'm gonna slide this off my press. I am not going to reuse this paper and I'll show you why here in just a second. I'm gonna get this next one set up. So sublimation paper on my press bottom patent. Flip my design over and I wanna make sure the edges are out of the press and not flipped back over themselves. So the print is on the top and then I'm gonna complete that sublimation sandwich with another layer of protective paper. And then I'm going to close that for 60 seconds and we're going to take a look at this one. So I did pull it off onto my heat safe protective mat. Let's take this off. So right away I can tell you there's ink right here. Not sure if you can see that. And there's ink on the other side. So this paper cannot be reused or you run the risk of transferring it to your next blank. So let's take a little peek here. And... 
there is my design. Now, I have something to have a little fun with to try to get a photo shoot. So I will put this on my pets and I, or one pet, I'll put it on the boy. And you can notice I have, I must have not have got it close enough there. It has a little bit of white there, but that's okay. We're going to see what he looks like. And meanwhile, my other one's done. So I'm going to let that up for a second, get this cleaned up. And then I'm going to pull this one off. We'll take a look at the colors of this. Now, this one I did notice it, it does show a little bit blue. That could be the um, color of the blank showing through too. But I think when you put it next to a black color, it's going to look just fine. This one does have ink transfer on the edges as well. So throw that away. And then let's take a look at this one. Ooh, look at that orange. That orange really popped. Oh, I love it. I love it, I love it. And I love that with the paints or the inks, when you're working with them, um, you know, if you're using markers, you're going to end up with more like solid stroke marks, which you might see the lines of the markers. So the inks are really great to blend, but you also have this color variation. So let's, I'll try to focus this in on here. You have, let me get a solid surface. We'll lift this up for you and let's see if the camera will focus on it. So you have some color variances. So it's not a solid color. You can see where my paint, my I mixed it and it was a little bit different. You know, a pumpkin is not always a solid color. It has, it's natural, it has different things. You can see kind of the brush strokes that I used with the um, green. So it gives it a unique look. So I'm going to try to set this up with my pets and we'll get some photos, hopefully, of the finished products. All the supplies are linked in the description below. Let's take a look at the finished photos. And here's a look before I started the photo shoot with my pets. And Bader turned out to be very dashing. He worked for this photo shoot for the treats. Goldie was not having it. She was not going to pose for me whatsoever. She took off and Bader decided to come back and finish out the photo shoot with me. So he is showing off and smiling for the camera. My daughter said it made a great addition to her stuffy as well and dressed it up for Halloween. This is her little goat. So thanks for joining me. If you have any questions, let us know in the comments below.